Okay, here we are. Here's a solution video for part A of the 2023 lab assessment. And here I am with a blank diagram in Lucidchart. Now this part A is supposed to take no more than 30 minutes, so hopefully this video will be no more than 30 minutes long. Let's see. Now first of all, let's make sure that we're going to have the UML shapes that we want. Here we are, UML, we've got them ticked. Um, I'm going to want... I'm really only going to want class diagrams, but that'll be absolutely fine. So let's go use selected shapes. Right. Now, let's have a look at the question. In Lucidchart, draw a UML class diagram showing a bunch of classes. OK. Now, as let's go down to our UML class diagram section. Now, as you recall, we've got a difference in UML between the um, the different kinds of classes. Here's one with both attributes and operations. Here's one with, one with neither, and here's one with no. That's an interface. Okay. So our choice is going to be: are we going to, are we going to use the plain class, or are we going to use the one with both with both um, compartments? So let's pay attention to the question to make sensible choices there. A class crime story with a public operation synopsis taking no argument and returning a string. OK, so for that we're going to want one with compartments. So let's put it in the middle there. And let's get it to say the right thing. OK, it's going to be called crime story. Can I type? Very hard to type while there's a video. So we're supposed to have a public operation. Let's edit this one. Public is the plus, remember, so we're going to edit this one because it's closest to what we want. Synopsis. It's going to take no argument, so we're going to have blank where the parameters would be, and it's going to return a string. Good. We can get rid of all the attributes. Uh, go on. Ah. Don't want it to type. It's a question of how many times you click. You're supposed to be able to do it. Don't worry about removing the compartment. There's no need to do that. An empty compartment will be do it just fine. Ah, you can probably do this much more fluently than I can at this point. Good. Okay, that's our class crime story with a public operation synopsis taking no argument and returning a string. What next? We need a class detective, and this one doesn't need to have any oper any attributes or operations, so we can use the class with no compartments. You could use the same one as this and then you could just empty the compartments. That would also be fine. The next one we want is a class character with a private attribute is murderer of type boolean. OK. Uh, so we're going to want one of these with compartments again. This one is going to be called character. Can I type? Yes. And it's supposed to have a private operate attribute, is murderer of type boolean. Let's use the private one then. Just to save ourselves a modicum of eff effort. Is murderer of type boolean. We will get rid of the other attributes. Because we don't need those. Get rid of the oper see th it so sometimes wants to select them all, which is very helpful, but I can't seem to make it do that on command. Maybe you can. But that kind of thing is why I try to allow plenty of time. Okay. A class victim. And we don't know anything about its attributes and operations, so it's just going to do like that. Good, that's our classes. Now, an appropriate relationship between character and victim to indicate that every victim is a character. Hmm. OK, so this is checking, do you know what a generalization is, right? We need a generalization arrow that goes from victim to character. Now, we're going to have to get the right kind of arrowhead, which you know how to do because you've used this tool before. And then we're just going to go from here to here. Good. OK, so there's a generalization error. 
Now remember, of course, a generalization does not need a name because it's not an instance level relationship. It's a relationship between the class victim and the class character. So we've done that. Next, aggregations indicating that a crime story may contain detectives, characters and victims. Okay, aggregation. Now we need a different kind of arrowhead. So we need the diamond type arrowhead. And we're going to need one from detective to crime story, one from character to crime story, one from victim to crime story. Very nice. And we even remember to get our aggregation diamonds at the correct ends of the associations. Now we don't need to name these associations because they're aggregations, so we know that they are to be read, you know, is contained in or is part of or something like that. So that's very easy. Now multiplicities to ensure every crime story must contain one or two detectives. Okay, so that's a uh, multiplicity here. Every crime story must contain one or two detectives. So that's this one we have to change at this end. Yay! There we go. It's going to be one comma two. Or you could write one dot dot two. That's synonymous. It must contain at least one victim. Uh, okay. Um, now, at least one. That's one dot dot star, right? to retype it because just because it's easier than finding the the zero and replacing it by a one. Okay. And between three and ten characters. That's this association here. And this is going to get replaced by three dot dot ten. Between three and ten. Okay. I should maybe have said inclusive. Perhaps I'll edit the question so that it does before you see it. Right, now a detective can be in more than one crime story. Uh, okay, zero dot dot star. That's fine, it doesn't say the detective has to be in at least one crime story. So zero dot dot star is probably fine. Maybe you put one dot dot star and I probably gave you the mark too. Okay, victims and characters can be in at most one. Okay, so now this has really got to be zero comma one. Oops. This one, zero comma one. Okay, and zero dot dot one would have been fine as well, but zero comma one is slightly fewer characters, so let's go with that. Okay, so that might be 40 marks. You might want to read through this and just check that you haven't made any mistakes. But that's looking pretty good so far. Okay, now question two of part A. Add a note to your UML class diagram. In it, write an OCL expression in an appropriate context to specify that every crime story must contain at least one character who is not a victim. Okay, there's more than one way to do this. The first thing to do is to find our note. Here's a note. So let's put this down here. And let's make it nice and long so we've got space to type. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go context crime story in. If you attached it via a dashed line to the crime story and then just put INV, then you got the marks as well. But this way I don't have to attach it to anything, it's a standalone piece of OCR. Now, what are we going to say? We want to say every, cr every crime story must contain at least one character who is not a victim. So what are we doing? We're talking about the collection of, cr of characters which is linked to an individual crime story object. Now. Remember that there's a default role name, which is the class name with lowercase. So self.lowercase character re represents the collection of characters which is linked to the crime story object we're evaluating. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to go self.character. Okay, now that's a set. It's a set of character objects. Now what do we want to say? We want to say that within there, there is at least one character such that blah blah. So we're going to say self.character arrow exists because that's how we can talk about a condition which must apply to at least one element. Now what are we going to put inside our exists? We want to be able to say that, there, that 
at least one of these characters must not be a victim. So we're going to have to use OCL type. I'm going to use the convenience operation OCL is type of. Now there are different syntaxes for the exists thing. I'm going to use the, the um, most elaborate one just because it seems to be kind of clearest. I'm going to go C such that C dot OCL is type of brackets victim. Ah, but I'm missing a thing so far because right now what I'm doing is I'm giving the negation of what I want because it's not that we want to have a character who is a victim, we, it's that we want to have a character who is not a victim. So let's go exist C such that not C dot OCL is type of victim. Okay, and there we are, we're done. That's our correct OCL which says what it's supposed to say. Now we have to export the diagram as a1.pdf. Oh, you've done the labs, so you can remember how to do that. We go into export as PDF. That's fine, we'll export the full contact the canvas. We will download it. 